Hello, and welcome to The Banker's Tech Talk video series. I'm Joy McKnight, Deputy and Technology Editor at The Banker, and I'm joined by Vinath Jayakumar, Investment Director at Draper Esprit, a pan-European venture capital fund that invests in disruptive tech companies at the early and growth stages. Vinath, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me here, Joy. So can we talk a little bit about Draper Esprit, because it really has a different kind of VC model. Can you explain how that works? Certainly. So traditionally, venture capital funds are set up as 10-year funds, mm. uh, and it's called the 5 plus 5 model, where the first five years are, you're investing, second five years you're harvesting. And what we found is that in that model, there are some limitations. For example, you come up against year 8, 9, or 10, and you're sort of under pressure to create exits mm. because you need to show a return to raise the next fund. So what that does is it creates a suboptimal outcome for the entrepreneur and for the fund. And so we started exploring what might be a way out of that model. And so we took the unusual step of actually IPOing ourselves. Mm -hmm. So we listed on the AIM and the Irish equivalent of the AIM. Mm -hmm. And as a result of that, we shifted towards what is, a, what is now known as a patient capital fund or an evergreen structure. Okay. And off the back of that, we're investing on balance sheet. Uh, and, it, and actually, at the same time, we have democratized the venture capital asset class. Mm -hmm. So now the wider public can invest in companies that we're investing in. And you yourself have a lot of uh, oversight in terms of emerging technologies in the fintech space. Uh, what would you say are the trends happening there? So I think I would say that at present, we're excited about uh, what I would call the unsexy back end of mm -hmm. financial services. Mm -hmm. And those are areas such as in fraud, whether that might be payments fraud or identity fraud. Mm -hmm. We're also very excited by um, core banking systems, which is basically the architecture of how banks are built. Those are two key areas for us, I think, in the next one, two years. Okay. And you've invested recently in, let's say, Form 3. How do you really decide on what companies to invest in? One of those things for us is, um, we, as part of the Draper DNA, we think about backing companies that are born in Europe, but that have a global ambition. Mm -hmm. And we're also slightly later stage investors. Mm -hmm. That means we're investing anywhere between five and 25 million pounds uh, in a series A and B plus type company. And that means the company is probably revenue generating mm -hmm. and it's on the cusp of scaling. And so Form 3 is an example of a company that's right smack in the middle of that. And my next question is, how do you find these companies? So holistically, mm -hmm. uh, as, as a Draper firm, uh, we attract certain types of entrepreneurs to us. Uh, and that's driven by, by the, the halo effect of, of the Draper brand. And it's also driven by the types of investments we've made in the past mm. to show a legacy of the type of thinking that we have. Uh, but on a more practical level, uh, it is actually a combination of what we call inbound and outbound. Mm. So inbound is sort of referrals to us from other funds that we are sort of in the ecosystem mm. with. And outbound is a result of thematic work that we undertake. Mm. So my thoughts around fraud or around core banking systems, we kind of create a lie of the land and we work out who do we want to speak to, and then we reach out to some of those entrepreneurs. Okay. And my last question is, what's on everybody's lips at the moment? <laughs> Brexit. You know, do you think that that's going to have an impact on funding for startups? I think there are, there are a couple of ways to think about it. So one specifically in the context of Brexit and fintech, there is a regulatory point of view. So we're, not, we're, we're unsure about what would happen to UK regulated fintechs and how they could passport those rights into mm. Europe, because at present they are able to. Mm and vice versa. So say a, com a fintech company in Germany that's regulated by the BaFin, could that continue passporting into the UK? In terms of what we think about from a funding perspective, mm -hmm. actually the status quo still remains. Mm -hmm. I think as a whole, whether it's Europe or the UK, we're both very bullish about fintech in general. Mm -hmm. And so there's a lot of dry powder that's not yet invested and that is being deployed into fintech. So we do not think there is, a, there is an immediate change. Okay, great. Thank you so much for your insights, Vinith. Thank you, Joy.